the vaccine, the human guinea pig stuff in Africa is so insane. And the, the Bill Gates like test, it's almost like, um, this, the stuff they're doing is so evil. It's almost like if you had a video game and the point of the video game was to be as evil as possible to as many <laughs> black people in Africa as possible, like yeah. make, and then, and then making it so that they're like trying to get it. So they're drinking urine and, and feces. That's that's the most insane evil thing, man. Like, never mind the, the cre like cr tenfold increase in population from uh, human aid, et cetera. Never, never mind the the vaccination experiments and the AIDS and all this other stuff. Like the icing on the cake. Like that's how you know someone's really evil is when they're. It's not just the pragmatic thing. It's not just like trying to bring about some <clears throat> you know future world scenario it's not like oh we need to do this to get to the the mean the means justify the end we have to get here we have to get to the future and injecting these blacks is very important to do like you know it's absolutely evil when he's like okay now we're gonna make poo poo cakes <laughs> welcome back to the alex jones show i'm your guest host jay dyer you know I was on here a couple months ago for the first time, and uh, I said some strange, enigmatic, mysterious phrases. I prophesized, I said, test tube, gub gub, snail man, micro machines. And some people were mystified by this, but I was predicting the future. I was predicting the one, the only, the legend of trolling, Mr. Samuel Hyde is joining us today. And before I mention that, uh, before I get into that, I wanted to say that, uh, you know, I, I thought that I was a legend of trolling at one time. When I was in high school, we actually arranged a kind of a uh, a black operation, you could say, in high school, high school black ops, where we wanted to upseat the existing order by electing a beautiful slow boy to uh, class president. And that's a true story. The uh, cheerleaders, Mean Girls Brigade were, were furious. And I thought that I had mastered something of, of trolling. But I realized that in the big leagues, I was nothing. I was, I was, a, I myself was a test tube, gub, gub, snail man, micro machine of trolling. And today I have the master, the, probably the, as Alex said, top of the totem pole of comedy for everyone, perhaps 40 and under, Mr. Sam Hyde. Sam, are you there? Can you see me? Hey. I can see you, sort of. <laughs> can, you can you hear me? I can hear you. Yes. That beautiful, uh, smoky voice is coming through. I got to finish reading. I got to finish. I'm on the last page of my favorite book right now. Hold on. Is it? God damn, man. One second. Let me just change the background. <sighs> Choose background effect. There we go. Okay. I just had to, I got to finish reading the last page of my favorite book. Just kidding. <laughs> oh, just crap, kidding. Dude. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for sending these, by the way. They're very entertaining. The master uh, troll trolled me on the Alex Jones show. Is this this is well, they'd, epic? They'd be they'd be more enter entertaining if they weren't so uh, <clears throat> packed with uh, disturbing realities. Um, one second, let me just get back in uh, Elon Musk's um, private AI chamber. Okay, hey, I'm back. We're using teleportation now. I don't know if you know that's real, Are but you back teleportations. The chamber there with with the coom bots. Yeah. Yes, we're we're researching new ways to coom, new unnatural, uh, freakish ways to genetically modify your testicles to make them uh, make your orgasm ten times more powerful. Uh, this All is right, a, Sam. I, sorry. Sam. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Go ahead. Sam, slow down, slow down. You're gonna blow our minds. Mm. Tell us. Mm. Let's get back to the origins. What are the origins of Sam Hyde? His influences, his comedic <laughs> prowess. Where where do you come from? Who's, who who inspired? You? Um, I, I, this is not a joke. I seriously, I seriously just swallowed this wrong. <laughs> one second. Give me like one second. <clears throat> okay. All better. <laughs> so I'm really sorry about that. It's unprofessional. Well, let me ask you something. Cause I need it. to know before what? we, before we do battle and debate, because I am an atheist technological no, I'm just kidding. But I want to I want to size you up and, and know. Uh, uh, God! Uh, uh, I, I seriously took that in the lungs. What kind of man you are. So I want to know, are you a Burt's Bees strawberry man? Or are you a vanilla bean man? 
Are you more of a classic man? This is important, by the way. Or are you a honey man? Or wait, are you a peppermint man? Are you a strawberry man? That's a dupe. Are you pumpkin spice? Are you more of a cucumber mint style? Or would you call yourself wild cherry? Now, the thing people don't know about wild cherry, it stains your lips red. That's a price you might have to be willing to pay because it is technically the best flavor. Now, I'll tell you my answer. What's your answer? Go with your gut. <clears throat> my immediate reaction is that that soy mean face, um, but uh, probably my fiance does uh, lip gloss, so I just use whatever <laughs> lip gloss she's got laying around. So no Burt's Bees for me. Solid answer, solid answer. Lip gloss, sometimes superior case. I'm cucumber mint myself. Hold on a second. I knew it. <clears throat> yeah, cucumbers. I'm sorry, I'm not, I'm not, I, I, sh I shouldn't, uh, I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a little nervous right now. I've it's never okay, been Sam. in front of this, this many eyeballs. <clears throat> Sam, um, tell us your origins and your influence. Where do you come from? I don't know, man. I've been, uh, my, I guess, for influences, you know the show Wonder Shows in? You ever hear Wonder Shows? In? I think if there was one comedic influence that did did the most for me, it would be Wonder Shows. In. Um, and there was also a collection of uh, cartoons back in the day called Liquid Television. And both of yes, those, I think, it's, I think those are, I think those are important because the um, the aesthetics to me has always been more interesting than um, the content, which is weird <clears throat> to say. But like the uh, the kind of you know the kind of vaporwave stuff you do, that like. I I put I put a I think the dressing the sort of the the stylization of things is um there's an importance there it's and it's easy to get like wrapped up in in going uh, going with aesthetics in a way that's like vain or or uh, uh, doesn't have substance behind it and I think I think taking um, combining substance with like finely honed aesthetics has been what's uh, always kind of interested me so most most of my influences are aesthetic influences 80s anime 90s anime um that kind of stuff yeah i remember you used to watch uh, liquid television and and i was i was always entranced by aeon flux and she was always like you know doing things with nipples it was an obsession with nipples in that show and I, it mm -hmm. always weirded me out even though i love the art but but uh what, what was great about liquid television was that it was like a variety show and they would they would offer actually creative you know stuff <laughs> going on in alternative art at the time there's not, there's not, there's nothing like that. Like it was there for a while, it went away, and I see you, yes, as definitely a successor to that. Is that it, you went to art school? You know, you did this kind of stuff. You had to deal with the art hoes at art school. You did some great comedy about them art hoes. How yeah, did you get you. through art school without going crazy? I'm, I think that's when I started to think seriously about the distribution of resources and uh, about um, the the like the sort of the the um, puerile notion that every most people have when they're like 12 years old think when they start to think about government and how things should be distributed and seeing the like um inefic inefficiency and the um uh just the 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 bureaucracy and what a what a scam what a scam college is that's um that was yeah. a big formative thing for me was like living living through the scam and, and watching my dad blow uh two hundred and fifty thousand dollars on stuff you could learn on YouTube, basically. Yeah, I had, I had a similar experience. I didn't blow that much. Wow. Uh, I did blow quite a bit, though, uh, uh, on grad school. And in the middle of grad school, I realized that I'm paying this D-bag liberal guy to tell me that I can get a piece of paper and that he who hates me will allow me to go and talk about the things that I actually mm -hmm. knew better than that guy. You know what I mean? It's like, this is totally a scam and brainwashing by the way it's such a, it's such an insane waste of money because that's that amount of money you know you can use that to start not not just one business i mean it depends on what kind of business you're trying to start but that's like that's startup capital for fucking oh sorry i'm sorry Oof. that's startup capital for effing 10 businesses you know and that's yeah. uh, across the uh across the entire country all those people i mean if you want to help if you're one of these people that wants to uh if you want to do good, if you want to be charitable, look at the look at the uh, the waste of uh, the waste of money that's happening in, in colleges, and think about what that what that money could do. I mean, you know, Dwight Eisenhower has that uh, his his uh, quote about uh, man. I'm too scatterbrained for this podcasting stuff. This is one reason why I don't do it. But he, when he was when he was no, railing against the 
the military industrial complex and talking about how, uh, <clears throat> you know, one B-52 bomber is like the cost of a hospital, that kind of thing. Right. It's just like um, there's so many people who uh, are concerned with with helping helping society, but they're unwilling to like um, look at uh, look for inefficiency in these hallowed institutions. Before we get to uh, paradigm shift, which was was kind of an epic troll, um, I want to I want to take us out to the break and mention that if you want to follow Sam's work, you can go to mde.tv, mde.tv, to uh, get access to his content. My work is at jaysanalysis.com. You can find my books, uh, my subscription, and all that there. Uh, and when we come back, we're going to get into some of the most epic trolling probably ever. Uh, if you've seen the Yes Men, you can think of th those kinds of trolling events. But I think this one even topped that one by making fun of the whole TED Talk phenomena. So when we come back, we'll get into that with Sam Mike. Welcome back to The Alex Jones Show. I'm your guest host, Jay Dyer, of Final Album with our good friend Sam Hyde. Uh, Sam you know, when I when I first saw TED Talks, you know, back in the early 2000s, I remember seeing the first one actually was not bad. It was something about like symbols and geometry and nature. And I was like, oh, this is pretty cool. And then I click on the next TED Talk and it's like some witchy woman saying, uh, we have more, uh, more men, uh, we have more women graduating from college than men now, and women are more men than man. And 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 then I click on the next one, and it's Bill Gates, and he's talking about we got to get the numbers down, we got to get the population. Down. So eat your own eat your own doo doo, you, <laughs> drink drink how the did poo you water. Up with this epic troll of paradigm shift, where you trolled TED Talk. Can you tell us about that? I'm sure you've I'm sure you've talked about this before. The um, Bill Gates's fixation on getting people to uh, drink pee. And eat their eat their or uh, drink their doo doo water. That's so insane. I'll, I'll get to oh, your yeah, question. Like, trend, second, how just, we're gonna make yeah we're gonna make feces into meat. This kind of stuff. And, and <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. like if you, dude, the here's this is the thing. All right, I'm I'm not actually all that racist. I'm probably as racist as most people are. I'm probably I'm probably as racist as most black people are. And there there are things that happen to black people that are like mind blowing. Like this, the the vaccine, the human guinea pig stuff in Africa, is so insane, and the the Bill Gates like test. It's almost like um, this the stuff they're doing is so evil. It's almost like if you had a video game, and the point of the video game was to be as evil as possible to as many <laughs> black people in Africa as possible. Like yeah. make, and then and then making it so that they're like trying to get it so they're drinking urine and and feces. That's that's the most insane evil thing, man. Like, never mind the, the cre like cr tenfold increase in population from uh, human aid, et cetera. Never, never mind the, the vaccination experiments and the AIDS and all this other stuff. Like the icing on the cake, like that's how you know someone's really evil is when they're, it's not just a pragmatic thing. It's not just like trying to bring about some, <clears throat> you know, future world scenario. It's not like, oh, we need to do this to get to the, the, mean, the means justify the end. We have to get here. We have to get to the future. And injecting these blacks is very important to do. Like, you know, it's absolutely evil when he's like, okay, now we're going to make poo-poo cakes. <laughs> yeah. It's, 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 it's intentionally it's, um, uh, puerile. It's an intentional, like, like the dog, rub the dog in the face, you know, uh, uh, his face in, in the, in the mess. So you I, should, brilliant... I, should, I don't mean to appear callous, like laughing so much. It's just that it's so insane and twisted. Like it's it doesn't something, sound real. It's, it sounds crazy. It's not, it's not even out of like science fiction. Like it's beyond, it's beyond that. Like if you, if a science fiction, fiction writer wrote something like that, you'd be like, Oh, this is disturbing. I don't want to read this anymore. Like there's no great, there's not that many, ideas like this in great science fiction. It's just so insane. Anyway, so, okay, sorry. So Gil, Gil Bates had already done his TED Talks, and then you did your troll of the TED Talk. Can you tell us how that came about? It's just like, you know, watching TED Talks, because there's some good TED Talks. It's like there's, all, there's usually something interesting you can glean from most of them. Um, there's, there's always something, someone will say something that's interesting and it, it'll be worth skimming through for 20 minutes on double speed or whatever. But, right. um, just the, um, it's the sort of Reddit, <clears throat> Reddit atheist science, scientism, like 
taking taking all of all of human knowledge and all of the scientific method, balling it up into this like cool little robot guy and say, for science, for sh- Eureka, and uh, like fetishizing and um, t- uh, like people who have people who don't have the ability to go through a scientific paper, not saying I have that ability either, but people who uh, just have no understanding and they look at these like gleaming, the promise of gleaming rockets and the promise of tasty vaccines and thinking that like, this is, uh, this is the new God or something like that. And that's sort of the, the, the vibe that I got from uh, Ted talks. The guy that organizes Ted talks, I forget what his name is. It's some slightly fruity, fruity sounding name, Christophorus, something like that. But he comes on stage with like an Asian style, um, no, no collar shirt. And when he, whenever like he does make a villain type of shirt, yeah, 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 exactly. And when he makes an appearance on stage, when the when the TED talk is interesting enough and and important enough and and high level enough for him to come on stage and like thank the person, he's always like very, he's got this like weird kind of uh, air of humility, like he's talking to the Pope or something. Like he'll come up and like take take the, shake the hand like it's a precious. Uh, this is the most precious handshake. You are you are a prophet. You are leading us in the new the new way. That kind of thing. So I just thought I just thought it was a a, um, a sphere that was ripe for uh, some kind of uh, prank like that. I know to to be fair, what I did was a TEDx talk. It wasn't a TED talk, so it was less thoroughly vetted. But I think I got the point across. It still worked, yeah. I mean, yeah. and this was uh, this was not that long ago. Uh, you, you're the sort of the beefy. Somebody said you looked like I built Leon Trotsky. So you you were already the buff Thanks. Leon Trotsky, Sam Hyde there at that point, but. Thank you. Now, you, said had million dollar, you had million dollar extreme. Do you want to get into the, the, the drama of the cancellation? Because you were like the pioneer of the deplatforming cancel culture stuff for comedy. You, you, you were before the media stuff, the alt media and all that. They went for comedy. They went for you. Yeah. Well, I think um, the, th- the, the key thing that sort of set us, set us up for targeting is we were kind of like the, the last remaining uh, not like white power, but like white group of white guys not acting like fruity little uh, apologizing um, yeah. the way that the way that other white guys in entertainment sort of have to have to act. You know what I mean? And um, it was uh, it was just very strong and unapologetic and and high octane. And um, I think it was I understand why it was threatening, especially with the the Jews rock sketch. Uh, I can I can see why they took issue with that. Yeah, and and you uh, you guys had high ratings. I think you had like what a, a million or two in the, in the uh, yeah regular... we got we broke a million we broke a million views on the I think the first and last episodes we were uh, like rate number two uh, for not just Adult Swim but for um, which wouldn't be that impressive but for like late night cable I forget what the what the what the rankings were but we we killed it and the. Um, uh, creative uh, head of the network, uh, Mike Lazo, he said, uh, he said, we're going to shoot a hundred more episodes. You guys are the wow. next Tim and Eric. We're going to do a hundred more episodes. He was, everyone was stoked on it. And you had, uh, basically just a couple blue check marks with what five, 10 followers and retweets simply send out a few emails and everyone just yeah. collapsed and capitulated. Yeah, it was, it was, uh, I think probably what did it was, um, uh, Bernstein directly getting in contact with, uh, what's the guy, Jeff Zucker, the guy that runs, uh, whatever, what's Turner, what's so, above so, Turner? Uh, so yeah, I, know I, mean, I don't care about, about so the BuzzFeed dude. Know. Yeah, it was the, the BuzzFeed dude directly emailing the top, uh, Yamaka at the, uh, network mm. getting us yanked. Did, no uh, offense. did you... Uh, there was a, there was a phone call where you uh, had a, a, a conversation with that guy. That was pretty, pretty funny, but, and, and you never did characterize yourself as all right. It was just sort of this label that then they paste on whoever they want. Welcome back to the Alex Jones show. I'm your guest host, Jay Dyer of jaysanalysis.com. I have this beautiful fashion bag that I often shop with and wear as I Good. walk across campuses. And uh, it's this beautiful, Face, I think, believe is this is this Miss Mama Hyde? Is that Mama Hyde or who is that you? Is that you? Is well, that... that's uh, that's me at a moment of high bloat. 
and uh, prob- probably high estrogen as well. So if you want to call that mama hide, you're welcome to. And I do, uh, I do resemble my, my mom in that. Yeah, thank you. Um, you were asking about the alt-right thing. I think um, alt-right is one of these terms that's so uh, – it's such a, a linguistic weapon. It's like the word Nazi where uh, – it kind of it kind of takes on the meaning of whatever the person throwing it out means. I don't think it's I don't think it's unfair to say that I'm alt right. Um, I definitely think that white people should have some sense of identity and um, should stop being such pussies, and uh, that we should stop pretending like like race isn't real. I don't have any sort of hatred. Um, uh, so I think I think a, the the one thing that was. Um, the place they took it with was they said that, <laughs> that picture is crazy. The place they went with it was they said that there were that we had swastikas in the graphics for the show. The graphics for the show, I worked on those. I put blood, sweat, and tears into those graphics. They were it's like the, some of the best work I've ever done. Um, and we were forced to censor them completely, including the logo for the show. Uh, so you can only really see the, the final versions by looking at my upload of them on YouTube. And there are no swastikas in any of the graphics for the show. Um, so that's the one kind of funny, funny, uh, claim they made is that we put, you know, I, I, I deconstruct films and symbolism and I will point out, you know, squares and compasses and, you know, kind of esoteric mm-hmm. Masonic symbols in film. And then these people will say, you're crazy. You're a lunatic. It doesn't exist. However, for you, mm-hmm, oh, mm-hmm. any yeah 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 exactly like sim- symbolism suddenly becomes uh very real when it's uh directed at them but uh the, no. the one thing we did was we used the james holmes shooter logo in the main in the main uh world peace logo that is true as you can oh, see wow. what is the meaning of life right. what is the meaning of death and the reason now, the reason for pretty, that is uh yeah, this is like high level serious satire and of course you know Sarah Silverman she can get away with this she can make jokes about whatever she wants to but you know just subtle things right i mean you mm-hmm. have undergone a very bizarre situation where a meme of you and i think you were probably like the first comedian to really become a meme and then the meme takes on a life of its own what was that experience <clears throat> like it's uh, not as uh, not as shocking as um, people think. It really doesn't affect uh, affect my life all that much. These shooter memes. I have gotten a few visits from the FBI, but they've always been. Uh, I explained to them how how computers work, and I explained to them that um, it's possible to make a to make a Facebook account with someone else's name, and then they usually uh, they usually stand down. Not to mention the fact that I tower over them and physically dominate them and intimidate them in our interactions. Little so the FBI, FBI man would all like. And we we got this buff guy here. Looks like Leon Trotsky. So you got like you got like uh, FBI well, sent, boomers. The, fir- the, the first time they sent this guy that was uh, looked like Columbo, like he was he he actually struck me as a as a um, sharp sharp guy, but he was like a little guy. And the se- yeah, then the second the second time they sent two big dudes that I was still bigger than, and I still was standing there flexing as I answered their questions. Um, <laughs> let me can I can I give some shout outs, Jay, before I forget here. Yeah. Can I shout out some people? Shout out to Frank Hassel. Check him out on YouTube. Shout out to Big Flame, Joey, Instagram, JXXYY, Jet Neptune, Concept Graphics, Killing It, Reigns FX. It's a, it's a short list. I'm almost through it. Uh, w Girardi on Instagram, Derek Maves, B9 Tumor, Jesse Yellen, Joe Rogan, and Cantbot, and Wecking Ball. Cantbot and Wecking Ball. Check him out. Let's keep going here. What else? What else we got to talk about? Let's talk about the Great Reset because this whole this idea of have you heard of this capitalism thing? This this like gay version of uh, uh, hap, of capitalism, even more gayer, where it's like now we're going to focus on on an, an economics of making people happy. The UN is going to replace Ooh. individual entrepreneurs, and you're going that to sounds be awesome. in this. Yeah, doesn't that sound good? Um, and this fits into this Great Reset where they're going to replace uh, like owning stuff with with a circular sharing economy. That's what they want to bring, bring you in. Have you heard of has this? anyone, Jay, yeah. has anyone coined the term circle jerk economy yet? Can we start using that's that? That's where it goes, apparently. Okay. <laughs> no, I, I, that, sounds, uh, that sounds fun. So you rent your stuff and you kind of like share the yeah, land and stuff like that. Is that how it works? Want, yeah. Okay. Yeah, you want to have a car. I didn't, I didn't need have... it anyway. I didn't want it anyway. I, want, I wanted um, 
as long as the as long as the car that I'm renting can somehow benefit the impoverished people that uh, throw glass outside my building and uh, make it so that I have to get new tires and new windows every couple of months, as long as it can benefit them somehow, I'm happy for that. I love it. What now else you, they got I this great the, reset. Yeah, I bring this up because you know we we know you, you you're a fan of Stefan. Of course, Stefan just got deplatformed. And one mm -hmm. thing that you talk about in some of your videos, it's actually pretty practical. I wanted to get to because you do have some good videos that are advice to young guys. And if you want to mention oh, yeah. some of that, because those are pretty popular as well. If you want to, what's some, what's advice you give to young dudes? Well, step one is um, get you some of these, some of these right here, estrogen blockers. Okay, you might need some of those, dude. I was so. I was so lost because I had a, uh, my father wasn't like negligent or anything, but he just wasn't like, he wasn't a, a man in the sense of like, um, of, you know, the sense that we would, we would use it. And there's such a, there's such a, uh, lack of masculinity nowadays and an absence of male role models. And, um, it's, uh, it's a crazy, crazy looking landscape. And that's why I think, um, people like, uh, Stefan, Stefan gets a lot of, um, uh, a lot of people beefing with him for being uh, culty and dogmatic and and whatnot. And um, there's people that uh, want to pick bones with uh, Jordan Peterson over being kind of basic. Can I say the B word, basic bitch? Is that allowed? People people think you know Jordan Peterson's kind of a basic bitch guy, and he's also you know whatever whatever weakness with the painkillers and whatnot. But I think it's it's so important for um, to find male role models and try to emulate them or figure out, you know, fig get the, get the old wisdom, the wisdom of old and uh, bring that into your own life. Cause it still applies. We're still in, we're still in a battle. It's a, an info war. It's a battle for the mind. It's not a, uh, a bloody trench warfare battle, but we're in, we're in a battle for the soul of humanity right now. So you better <laughs> start acting like it and get some of that, uh, some of that old Sun Tzu wisdom. Yeah. I, I remember when I was, uh, mired in student debt uh, back in my 20s and I was listening to Alex I, I listened to stuff on at the time and they were always talking about being an entrepreneur and I kind of had in the, in my mind that you can't start your own business that's for some other weird CEO dude in Silicon Valley or something and then finally I just sort of broke and was like I'm just gonna try it I might as well I'd rather try that than be a wage slave and I ended up having some success and so I think there's a lot of wisdom in trying to to get young guys to think about being an entrepreneur and you promote that a lot. I really appreciate appreciate that about what you talk about. Um, it's getting harder with the, the tech stuff, but but you've been successful still. I guess I got something important here, Jay. The um, the only real resource young young men nowadays are so destroyed. They have their hormones are effed up. They have uh, you know no money. Everybody anybody I talk to that hits me up on Instagram or whatever, I'm like first thing I ask is how much money do you have saved up? They have two hundred dollars. Like nobody has. Nobody has nothing. Nobody has any skills, et cetera. The only thing young people have now is time. Time is this, um, t it's, it's cliche to say what a golden, important, vital resource, precious resource it is, but it's also true. You can't overstate the importance of time. So going into, um, going into, into business, being an entrepreneur or whatever, or find getting some sort of skill, like uh, taking, taking your time and trading it, trading it to somebody else for, uh, a barely over minimum wage. And if it's, if it's not getting you skills, if it's not advancing what you want to do for yourself in the world is it's, uh, it's such a colossal waste. When you think about that, if you, if you're working at target, if you work at Petco, if you work some, uh, ass job like that, you should Im imagine yourself on a, on a wooden stakes, like an old witch burning and imagine, just know that that's what you're doing with your 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 vital essence, with what you've been given. Yeah. If you work at, if you work a day job, you are burning everything. There's that. Are you, are you like that? I hear that beautiful piano music, and I feel like I'm Matthew McConaughey flying my link and up into space because I think that's the <laughs> I think that's that I think that's that beautiful music from that weird, creepy movie Interstellar. That's also she. She's a bunch of it's a bunch of mess. Excuse me. Oh, I'm sorry. I went into I went into Matthew mode and I, and I messed up there. Sam Hyde, he's with me here hey. on the Alex Jones show. Welcome back, Sam. We were talking about um, um, men, what it is to be a man. You say things like simple stuff: lift weights, get a skill, get a trade, get a gun, go crazy, become insane, become desperate, go out in the streets, 
I can't say Don't that. Games, Jay, right? Are you crazy? I can't say that. Um, no, I think uh, when you fir- when you first start getting woke, when you first start learning that the um, the world is this sick hall of mirrors, uh, it's it's tempting to get um, fe- feverishly caught up in the various little plots and schemes and uh, attempt to unravel the unravel them, which is a, which is important work. But I think a lot of people get overwhelmed <clears throat> by that and they get sort of uh, sort of fatalistic and black pilled, as they say. And I think um, for anyone who ever ever gets black pilled or overwhelmed or or uh, whatever, yeah, Pepe Silva, right, <laughs> Sylvia, right there. Um, <laughs> I think it's it's one of the most radical things you can do is take ownership over your own little circle, your own, uh, you know, yourself, your family, your friends, becoming uh, treating treating that like it's this world problem problem that you want to solve. And uh, step step one to that is. Um, learning about masculinity and getting, um, <clears throat> that's, that's why people like Stefan Molyneux and, uh, Jordan Peterson are so attacked, even though none of what they say is really, you know, insane or, or racist or, or what have you. It's just, uh, what, what they're saying is, uh, radical because it's, a, it's effective potentially in, uh, fixing the world. I think people need to, uh, just get that, you know, get that masculinity, homie. Do you feel like comedy is like, is it dead now? I mean, I, I remember 10 years ago, I would, I would watch uh, Mitch Hedberg and comedians. I thought, oh yeah, stand up. It's, it's kind of funny. And then it's like in the last 10 years, stand up is almost itself another vehicle for social justice. And you got these oh, yeah. Hannah, Hannah, what's her name? Trans comedian. And it, she's just mm-hmm. propped up because of like some weird, you know, fixation that well, she even, has it used, yeah is, is even, comedy uh, even, even big ones even great ones um is that a man right there that we're looking at i thought that was a, a lesbian well I if you became samantha hyde then you would probably be welcomed back right if you dude made that, that person is so disturbing to look at i probably would that's a good tactic right there i tried i tried you being be black but uh, nobody nobody i didn't take enough mel- melatonin or mel- melanotan too to, to convince people um, you know, comedy, comedy's dead. I mean, for comedy to be, for comedy to be, uh, an art form that's like worthwhile, it has to, it has to be subversive. It has to be the underdog. It has to be, um, right. the voice, the voice of truth of truth. That's like uncomfortable to speak. And now the, the version of truth that's uncomfortable to speak is, uh, f- uh, F Trump. You know what I mean? In in one way or another, it's whether it's a, it availed in a sophisticated way, or whether it's just straight up. Uh, look at Donald Trump; he's so fat; he's got no penis. He must have a short penis. Or whether it's something more sophisticated, like like uh, some of the stuff that Dave Chappelle has done recently. Uh, it's it's all f Trump in some way or another. So no, it's 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 a, a wasteland. Yeah, it's and, and there's a, there's a similar similar parallel in journalism. Journalism used to be supposedly this thing that was there to mm-hmm. keep eyes on the establishment and to critique and you know chase after stories. You know, supposedly the we mm-hmm. have this idea of journalists going after mobsters back in the '50s, mm-hmm. and they would pursue the truth to their own you know altruistic These ends heroes. wherever they led. Yeah, and now well, now, now it is the establishment. Now journalism. Now the the political establishment bends the knee to the to the media. Uh, a lot, a lot of the time, and now it's just a hand in hand. It's it's part of the same uh, same uh, coctopus, same octopus <laughs> right there, you know. Do you think there's stages of the cucking of comedy? Like, do, does a big comedian kind of get to a certain point, and then he's maybe expected to do this, this, this to to go to the next level or to keep getting the the the, the work? Is is that where yeah, it's at? I mean, where they're all basically expected to do this? They made it. They made it pretty clear to me that we would have, um, one reason why our, our group kind of fractured afterwards was they made it clear to me that, uh, we would have been able to keep the show if I issued a, a public apology and took our, uh, subreddit down. Um, there's definitely time to- there's, yeah, of course, anytime you get, it's probably this, I mean, I'm sure it's the same in any, in any field, any industry, as you get, uh, as you get bigger, people come out of the a shadowy figure comes out of the woodwork and tells you, Hey, you have to say this just alter your message slightly. Um, you know, if your, if your podcast gets bought by, uh, 
some company that has a lot of Chinese money, you're, there's probably a topic that you're going to start avoiding um, because of it, you know? What's your favorite MDE sketch? Joe Rogan. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> We'll get to your challenge here in a minute with, for, for Joe Rogan. I want him. I can taste blood. Um, pro uh, probably the, my favorite stuff is the, um, the stuff I did on my cell phone in my, uh, my mom's apartment way back in the day because that was the you, most insane. You tormenting your mom is just golden. Yeah. That's awesome. It was, it was the most insane and desperate, desperate time of my life. And um, those videos, it was like the one uh, – not ray of hope, but it was like the one, the, the most joyous moments were in front of that mirror, just saying the most cracked, <laughs> cracked out stuff that I could uh, come up with. <laughs> All of your mom's, your mom's echoing constantly. Sam, yeah. stop! Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh my You just goodness. keep pushing it and pushing it and pushing it. I know. Well, part of, part of her, it's not, it's not so much that I want to abuse my mom or anything. I love my mom so much. <laughs> I talk to her often, but, um, her style of parenting was just such uh, constant like brow beating and um, nannying and like telling, telling me that my teeth were going to fall out if I, uh, you know, used them to like unscrew a bottle cap or something, or that I was going to burn the roof of my mouth, like hypochondriac hypochondriac stuff like to an extreme like constant warnings you're gonna you're never gonna you're gonna lose your fingertips if you touch the, the that thing you're gonna get electrocuted if you go down the stairs you have to watch out for on the streets so so the uh the kind of like light light abuse that i gave her in those videos it trust me is fully warranted and um your, your mom i'm guessing of. probably she's boomer right there's something about the boomer yeah, era yeah. where they're Afraid of everything, you know, like they're really yeah. afraid of mm -hmm. everything. Yeah, 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 big time. Um, she's deaf, boomer, boomer to the core, boomer to the core. Now, um, you have a campaign going. Let's talk about that. You have issued. Oh. You want to get. You want to get Rogan into the octagon. I've issued several threats. Uh, I've had some of my uh, my friends from the martial arts world, uh, Chuck Norris, uh, Nick Diaz, uh, Lennox Lewis. Uh, et cetera, back me up uh, in real videos that they made for me, not cameos that I paid for. That's a rumor that I want to squash right now. There's a rumor going around that I paid uh, $2,500 for a Caitlyn Jenner cameo that uh, <laughs> was canceled, but my bank account still got charged. I'm waiting for the charge back on that. Um, that is, uh, that's a rumor. And Lennox Lewis and uh, Randy Couture did indeed come out with messages just for me because I'm in that world. I'm in Joe Rogan's world. I'm kind of a master of that world. I'm more, I'm more respected than uh, Joe Rogan is. You think Lennox Lewis would make a video for uh, Joe Rogan? I don't think so. Okay. The guy's a multi, multi-millionaire, best uh, legendary heavyweight. I don't think he's making a video for Joe Rogan. He made one for me because I'm in that, I'm in the game. I'm in the game. Joe. And you're ready come to, on. you're ready to step into that octagon. I'll is step right? into the octagon with Joe. I don't care. I'll, I'll I'll let him uh, I'll let him put his pajamas on and try to uh, try to cuddle me and roll around. I'll punch him dead in his face. I don't care. I know what his strategy yeah, and, would be. And I, his strategy would be to to hug me and try to cuddle with me in pajamas for uh, ten like, minutes. Try to wear me out like that. No, you're getting punched dead in the face, Joe. I don't care if you got a turning sidekick. I got a flipping sidekick. I got a backwards around town sidekick. You haven't even seen my sidekick. He'll come in with a with a team of lawyers. Right. Probably, yeah. Like Eleven lawyers in, in the octagon. I'll come in with a team of Hispanic gangbangers. How about that, Joe? Oh, some cholos. I got, street, <laughs> I got cholos. My my home my uh, thir uh, MS13 homies, Cezanne, Chino, Compache, uh, Chico, Chachi, Cheech. They'll all be there. And by the way, I issued a challenge to you, which you ignored, which was that after that I will step into the octagon with you, and you can bring I butter bean or that. any of. The you can bring butter bean or any of the, uh, 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 you know, washed no, up. I know uh, you're, UFC people in there. you're a man of, you're a man of God. I don't want to, I don't want to test my standing with the big man upstairs by taking on one of his, uh, great champions. I'll pass on that one. All right. All right. Well, thank we'll you, Sam. We'll do that for later. Me. It was great. Hey, Jay, thanks. Um, thanks a lot, him. man, for having me on. Absolutely. And MDE. thank you for sending these, uh, TV. esoteric Hollywood. Thank you for sending that out as well.